My name is Seika Bawadi. Is that in our story, uh, it is said that we were put on t Turtle Island. So, anyways, that's uh, I guess that's where I'll begin. So, shock. So most of us knows it as a uh, North American. So, a few years ago when I went to court, I claimed myself as part of Turtle Island people, because that's what we were told. So I began studying the geography, the mountains in Quebec. New York, Virginia, Georgia, Northwest Territory, Manitoba, Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas. And then you got Saskatchewan, Wyoming, Utah, and Arizona. We <coughs> got uh, the mountains. And then we got we, our Rockies. The Rockies are, uh, as Grandpa said, is that the turtle is slightly tilted. So we see Baffin Island, uh, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, uh, Long Island, which would be the summit of the Rockies. So uh, the turtle show, our Rockies would be underwater here. Uh, there's seven mountains going down in Mexico. There's six rivers, the St. Lawrence, the Mississippi, the Colorado, Fraser, Mackenzie, and Churchill. Off the shore of uh, Greenland, there's a round island and the other side is a mountain, and there's a gully down the middle. So this is what I start to see. Yeah. The tectonic plates. Superior goes up this way, and Michigan, come, Michigan Lake comes down this way. So anyways, that's... Uh, what I start seeing. So anyway, the story goes back further where they say, I was told that uh, the other society that, li that lived on, uh, or erase this, that live on the other side of the world their God, they say. The people that live on this, uh, Indonesia, Persian Gulf, Africa, Madagascar, Australia, New Zealand, Fuji, Hawaii, Canada. So, they say the native people tied it to the turtles too. This is what we call South America. So I began to look on that story to where this creature had lost his the, the head. So anyway, Amazon comes here, Kikikaka Lake, Plain River, and it's Kilimanjaro, European Alps, Russian Alps, and the Himalayas. There's two currents going up and across. 
one goes across here, goes around, but bounce off, then Mary cuts it and hits here. So that's, that would be the juggler. And uh, the tempo would be the hurricane. So anyways, in the story is that the turtle will turn at one point. And as he turns, he pivots the head back up. Because underneath the ocean, the oceanography teaches you to see this thing. <clears throat> so, in our story is that these are the two grandfathers of the land. They're the oldest creatures that I've seen live that went across time. So we have the turtle on this land and uh, the elephant on the other land. In the water, it's the, uh, uh, what do you call them? The whale. That's the grandfather. And the grandfather of the bird is the condor and the eagle. So, <coughs> This is somewhat how we see the life, how we see our world coming down from the cosmos to where the Creator put us. Why do they say they put the spirit of the mother there? It's because everything that's on the land is for our well-being. The food is there, clothing is there, medicine. Everything is there where it's supposed to be. As a, let's say, we ask a single woman to put the, fill up the house. She's gonna put her knickknacks and stuff, yeah. She's gonna beautify it to the way she sees it. But the thing is that when a child comes in, you know, many things has to be changed. But if you put a spirit of a mother, the mother goes in. She has to think about the food, the clothing, the medicine, you know, how things are placed. And that's how we see my mother hurt. Everything is there. It's just like what one what one feels in the city. Doesn't have to worry about medicine or food or clothing. But what once that's all buzzed off the line where I live. It's like taking all the stores from this town. Every single one of them. That's why we say sometimes Mother Earth is getting raped. Because we, do a, we lose all of that. What's on the line? See, when I started studying this, like when we take the mineral out of uh, the land, they have a purpose on the land. There's energy flowing on the land, and the minerals has a purpose. It's a cell, you could say. All metals are cells. They decompose, they're living cells. And they decompose. But they have, and the purpose is to, for the energy to flow. 
once you don't have any minerals in your system, you become anemic. That's where diabetes starts. That's a, there's a miscommunication in your body. So that way, the medicine is thrown all over. Because there's no communication in your body. Every single river that are blocked is like cholesterol to me. We're going to pump in the oil. It's in the heart section. And it's in the heart section of <coughs> this one too. And they're doing the same thing with the taking the mineral out. The river system. When I was young, fish used to be about this big on the river. Now you find them; they're only about this big. And that's somewhat our genetic right now. What's flowing in our cell, we're not healthy anymore. Some uh, the cells are dying. So is the fish. <coughs> Think about the geography of today. Yeah. I've used this in the classroom where children learn very fast what the world looks like. They understand what's going on. So I uh, You know, it's just so much to absorb at times, you know, don't know which way to go. Because, uh, you know, I could teach you that the mountain range is how the weather, weather function. You have these 13 mountains. So the wind goes up the shell here and goes down there. And this is where it creates the tornado and goes up and comes up to Quebec. In the winter time it passes more this way and comes down this way. Yeah. So anyway, like this, the turtle teaching, there's so many of it. There's uh, our cultural side where, like, in, with the Crees, the Creed tells the story when it was flooded during the Great Flood, they call is that they put everything on the, on a float in a swamp, musket, I guess you call it. They put their animals there, their, their birds, their plants, medicine, and whatever. So when the world flooded, it came back down, and they settled all on the northern shore. Because that's where the wind was coming from. So anyway, <clears throat> we tell the story that it was uh, from a great white pine. Everybody ran up to the top of the mountain, and what was at the top of the mountain is the great white pine. So it uprooted, and that's where all the creatures lay. And they say uh, that the muskrat <coughs> went to get the, the land, the soil, to hurt on the bottom of the, the water. And they put on a turtle's back. 
and they began to sing to expand the land. Until uh, first the, car, uh, the deer went around. It just took them seven days. He said, it's not big enough. Then uh, it was the buffalo. It took them seven years. And then uh, uh, the caribou went around where he went for seven generations. So that's how, that's how it was recounted to us. Down in Louisiana, they recount the story of where the trees pulls out the water, like in the bayous. And you, you jump across on this side, it's uh, the Hopis and the Navajo that recounts the story of uh, the ant bringing them down into the, into the earth when the fire came, came about and burned the whole earth, they said, when the world was a ball of fire. And then it cracked open. So that's the people that lived in the Grand Canyon. And then you have the people from the West Coast, uh, what they call the wind people. They recount the story where the wind was so strong that it peeled the skin and the flesh right off the, the back of the turtle, which is the, the Rocky. So that's their story. And uh, the Inuits, what they recount is the story of uh, when the world froze. And uh, as, you, as they walk south, the world expanded. They see more animals, plants, insects, birds, yeah. and the tree grew. And the communi community grew as you walked down <coughs> south. So you see all the changes of the evolution of the earth itself as you put the story together. And each society holds a, a story of how they seem. It's just like a, a turtle that's coming out of the water for the first time on the land. He begins to walk and he begins to grow, grow feet. Depending on the climate, he changes. The environment, he changes. Food source, he changes. So each one evolves in a different way. And our nation <coughs> did the same way. We evolve and we carry certain stories to evolve. So I just don't hold one particular truth, you could say. Yes, I have also truth from my nation. But there's other truths from other nations. The Navajo explained to me what they call the mother energy. That, that works between the, the sun and uh, the earth. The Mayas explained me the cosmology. How it works. The Kogis taught me consciousness. See, they do a ceremony in the darkness. They do it for seven years, <coughs> some of them for a lifetime. But they, they go in the darkness and they bring them stuff. So they began to feel it. Whatever it's brought, let's say a banana. He listens to it, what it sounds like. Smells it. <coughs> but he sees it in his mind. And he puts a color to it. So for every creature, every plant, they learn that way. It 
It's like uh, teaching your spirit. This is our body, but the spirit within it, we teach it with what we hear, what we smell, what we see, what we taste, what we touch. Because this is where we create a balance. What feels good, what smells bad. What tastes is good. What's good for the eye. That's your spirit, that's your feeling. So that's what they taught me. How to see the world that way. And one of the key things is that we have it all in us. We are all capable of singing. Some of those say we can. But it's just to work on it and develop. Some of them can't draw. Practice a little bit. Bring you some places. So each one, each society holds a story, holds a um, philosophy, I guess you could say, of how we evolve. But since I have been seeing the world as such, I don't know more makes more sense. For, for each part of science, it starts off with a tear. I guess you could say this is our science, because that's the way we view the world. That's the way we observe it. I see it breathing by the tide. Every 13 hours, up and down. See, like you could look at this uh, on Google Earth. You could take everything what I'm saying. Right about here, you'll see the cloth. On the tail, you, you'll see it'll drag. It, it, it has moved on the bottom. Where they say, <laughs> Gulf of Mexico, uh, where the meteor is supposed to be up well. This is three dimension. The turtle's uh, bump, I guess you could say, in this lake. And there you see the actual floor of the ocean, which is the same as on the other side. There's two mountain ranges on the bottom, which would be the, the Marquette Eternal area. <coughs> this has begun to move. Yeah. One of the things that really this uh, tsunami that happened in Indonesia. And then a few months later, an earthquake in India, and then in China, and then Japan, as well as in Australia, and, and uh, what you call it, New Zealand. 
which would be, to me, it's like a spasm, muscle spasm. They say it's a tectonic plate here, but is that the time? Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. It's a flow on the time. So anyways, yeah, that's the picture I see, yeah. Um, okay. One more. Right about here. Uh, Antarctica. But I'm right off. There's seven islands sticking out here. And on the bottom of the ocean, you could see it. You could see it on Google Earth. Yeah. So they say that's the story of the dragon as well. So that's the story that's coming up. Yeah, that's somewhat of our prophecy. Our vision, our cosmic vision of uh, our existence on Earth. Here. You got any questions? I'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> about a lot about uh, what you call it uh, the medicine wheel too, and the four colors. So when we put it over here, the medicine wheel. This is the white people. This is the black people. This is the yellow people. And this is the red people. So why did it divide, they say? Starts off in Babylon story, where the four races went their own way. And they developed their their civilization, I guess you could say. So by the time we get to the Phoenician world, they were using the black people as slaves. This is when the Great Wall of China was starting to be built. When they heard what was happening to this society, they wanted to block it. But what happened is that uh, they forgot about it. So it was left unfinished after 2,000 years of work. <coughs> and only in the 1400s that they came and see the red. And they treat them the same way as they treat these people. That's uh, like the story I heard when I was a child. But as I put these pieces together, it made more sense of what happened. So, What was happening 
is that the French were supposed to have this section. The British were supposed to have this section. The Spanish were supposed to have this section. Portuguese were supposed to have this section. <coughs> so that's how they divided the territory up between the kingdom, which we want to talk about through the Magna Carta. So anyways, did you bring that picture? No. Okay. Sounds good. So maybe maybe we can take some questions now. Yeah. Maybe for ten minutes and then we take a break. And then we come back for the second part with the time car and mm -hmm. the constitution of the So if you have any questions, now it's in time. Yes. Uh, what nation does the medicine of the story come from? Uh well. Well, it starts off, like I said, over here, because it's all four races that hold the peace. Yeah. Like, uh, like in the story of the, uh, the medicine way, we all took a gift, uh, which is... Okay. Let me just put a hole here so we could remember. So they say the white took the mobility, which is to work, you know, to construct, you know, to get things going, you know, and get going with life. You know. <laughs> uh, they say the yellow people took patience. So they're pretty much uh, they watch how the world was turning, now they're taking over. Yeah, pretty much. They say the black people took uh, emotion. Dancing, So anyway, uh, they took emotion. They expressed emotion through their stories. <coughs> to, even from as far back we could remember, there's always, you know, Something happening with the black people. They knew that place. And then they say they owe the, uh, the red owes the knowledge, which is of the land. Yeah. To get up the land, to create it. Like they say, uh, it's a remembrance of uh, what paradise looks like. We take away everything that human made. And that's what, how we see paradise. So we're still connected to that somewhere. So what, what this teaching, what this teaching is that, let's say I want to make a canoe. Huh? What knowledge do I need? My resources, my, my tools, my mathematics, uh, whatever, my sign. But uh, I'll need mobility to go study, to go pick up my resources and stuff. And I gotta have patience in order to do that. And then I use my emotion, you know, to express what I know, what I feel, and what I wanna express. So that way my canoe looks somewhat perfect. Yeah. So that's that's how we subdivided our society back then. So that's part of the story of uh, the Babylon story. We have that story too in our in our culture. eras like there was the Pangea and stuff like that. Does it still work? Like have they always been there or how about when the continents were placed differently? Uh, you see, 
But in the story of the, uh, the creation story, is that we live in different dimensions and different consciousness. Yeah. So when, uh, let's say, <coughs> a spider that's looking in the corner, when he's looking at, at us, at the room and at everything, he's, he's seeing it from his point of view, from his universe. So everything that he sees is from his perspective. So each creature, each plant, each part of the creation has a part in cosmology where they are the master, where, are, where they are the center of the universe at one point or another. So at this time in space, we are put on the turtle and the elf to teach us what what it is to live on, upon a land. 